Well, the latest fear in the environmental community is that poor people in hot countries in the third world might start using air conditioning. Can you imagine? Next thing you know, they'll be demanding canapes at Davos and crowding the beaches on St. Bart's. The insanity! It must stop. Josh Fox is a noted environmental filmmaker and he joins us tonight. Josh, can you imagine if people in Bangladesh had the gall to use air conditioning, how upsetting that might be to people in the Bay Area? Well, I, I think you're misstating the premise of the study that you're well, quoting. I think so. But before we get into that, before we get into that, let me ask you a question. Why would air conditioners cause climate change? I mean, that's what you're saying. You're well, saying I'm not, environmental I'm not actually, are outraged oh, because, I'm not actually because, saying um, that. Air I mean, conditioners it's, cause climate change. It's pop. Well, look, it's, my mind is open. Well, that's what your producer been. said to me when they invited me in on this segment, so I was assuming that that's what you were well, going to talk about. Well, I'm capable of speaking but, for myself, and let, let me just say that I'm totally that open are. to any possibility. Turns out UFOs are real. I never thought that before either, so I, I'm happy to believe in climate change. You just have to... Answer my questions slowly so I can understand. Okay, what's the question again? And, the question the, is, but, but why the, would the people in the Bay this. Area be outraged by people in Bangladesh having air conditioners? Well, well it's just interesting. Actually, people I, in the Bay Area the are not at all outraged by okay. that. No one is outraged by that. In okay. fact, the study um, that you are quoting said that we should look for more efficient air conditioners. That's pretty much all it said. It said if we want to look have at climate change that? emissions, we should look for air, more efficient air conditioners. Yeah, do you have yes, a more efficient air conditioner in your car? I, I, well, um, I have the air conditioner that comes with the car, but, oh, but the, not but a more efficient one. Most everyone, most, okay, let's just go back and backtrack for a second here because this is what, what happens every single time. You well, misstate the asking. premise and then I have to go ahead and correct you. So what's, what's really at issue here is climate change, right? The study is talking about climate change and how air conditioners could make climate change worse. But right? the premise of the study is, is also, in my view, incorrect because if you use something that actually cools the planet, for your electricity, like wind, like solar, instead of using fossil fuels, you can actually cool the planet at the same time as you can cool somebody's house. It's hilarious. So you don't you have to use wind fossil and solar to cool the planet. Um, that's not true. But well, let me ask you, let's, would, get, let's get back to the facts the level here. Hold on. Let's get back to the science that you and I can agree on. So I want to ask okay, you, you said that you're concerned that poor people in hot countries might get air conditioning that's not the most efficient possible air conditioning. And I asked you a really simple question, which is, have you made those same steps in your own life? Have you changed the oh, air yes, conditioning in your vehicle oh, oh, to become yes, the most efficient possible? And you said, no, I haven't, but you want the Bangladeshis to do it, which well, leads me to believe well, I, that maybe I, I you're I drive a, a used car and I drive a used hybrid. Um, in fact, I just got totaled on the streets of New Orleans by a drunk driver, so I don't have a car right now. But the bottom line is this. Um, oh, but you haven't actually done what you want the Bangladeshis to, to do and you don't have absolutely any plan have. to. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I have, have Tucker. No, 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 no. You're, you're cutting me off right now because I use um, a service where I can buy renewable energy instead of having to buy power Oh, you pay indulgences. Oh, I get it. So you no, get no, no, to have no, the things the that the price. poor people it's in the third world cheaper. can't have it's because you're rich enough to pay for to indulgences. Use, no, no, Tucker, you're also again misstating the facts. It's cheaper to use solar energy than any other form of energy right now for, for electricity generation except for wind. It's actually cheaper to use solar than it is to use gas. No, but I'm talking it's about your personal solar, behavior. You want to change the it's subject to some macro solar. question. I this want to ask not how about, you're living, this is but not you don't want to talk about that because you pay behavior. indulgences. <laughs> it's absolutely not about people's behavior. It is about the oh. systems that are at work here. And this, this is a political so, question. You know, this is so not as a, a rich guy, you habits. get to lecture consumer the poor people, but you don't have well, to change the way you guy. live. Well, I'm oh, definitely okay. not a rich guy. If you know what documentary filmmakers make, you should probably know that. Well, what relative I'm to, to the people is, living without air conditioning in if, Bangladesh, what we're talking about, what we're talking about is using fossil fuels for air conditioning. And what we should be talking about is how to use the most efficient air conditioning and the best power. The best power but is renewable energy. But you're not doing energy. that yourself. And that is, in fact, what the study says. Yes, but I But you're not doing that yourself, you I Josh. You're paying for yes, offset. Yes, I just said that I was, Tucker. Tucker, oh, you're not listening to no, me. No, you I mean, said listen, that your listen, car listen, Tucker, the rules have... of physics, the rules of physics apply to everyone, including you, which is presumably why you don't float up out of that chair, because gravity <laughs> applies to you. Although, of course, you have so uh, much hot air and bombast coming out of you that it, it's possible yeah. that you might just inflate and fly off off the set. But what I'm trying to you explain win. to you is when you, you burn Josh, fossil hot fuels, air bombast. when you burn fossil fuels, you beat me in the cliche contest. Fuels, We're out of time. You... I appreciate it, though. Thanks. We'll be right back.
Also developing this evening, tonight they are calling it now a competition and not a pageant. That is the new motto of the Miss America organization, which announced today that they are banishing the signature bikini portion of the pageant. Instead, contestants will now take part in a live interactive session with the judges, and the organization is also getting rid of the evening gown portion of the competition. What is going to be left? Telling women that they should wear whatever makes them real comfortable. I think some people would show up in sweatpants in that case. Um, um, is this enough, or is this changes that shouldn't ha be happening? Shannon Bream, our good friend, joins us tonight. It's so great to be here with Tucker and Shannon and all these great people. She's Fox News at night, of course, and a former Miss America contestant. Yeah. Miss Virginia, Miss Florida. I, I know you did not want to show any pictures of you from the pageants <laughs> tonight, but let me tell you something. We might have found some. I don't no, know. No, you, I mean, <laughs> Shannon is gorgeous, and um, you won those contests for a very good reason, uh, because you had it all going on. But I it's tried. very interesting to look back and, and see those. And you, I want to ask you this. So why are, why do you not want to show them? You, you know, know what I mean? What does that say about it's where It's so funny you are because it? it was such a different time in my life. And I'm completely proud of it. I love it. The Miss America pageant for me was a godsend because I won scholarship money through that that put me through um, school, undergrad, and a lot of my law school as well. And I didn't come from a family that had a lot of money and a lot of means. Um, we were hardworking, a teacher, and my dad was a cop. And so so for me, this was a really fun way to stretch myself. It was terrifying at times, but it really paid for school for me. So it was a great experience for me. I'm not sure anyone wants to see my swimsuit pictures now. Oh, please. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I was from New Jersey where pageants were really not that big, but to win Miss Florida and Miss, Miss Virginia with all these yeah, gorgeous fun. girls in Florida and Virginia. So, you know, I mean, you, you did really, really well with it. But, you know, I do have to ask myself, you know, are we past this whole thing mm -hmm. as a society? You know, as women, is is this really, you know, is there another way to have a good scholarship contest right. in this country rather than do this? Or it should all be about, okay, they're gorgeous, mm -hmm. you know, just like The Bachelor and all the other stuff that's right. on TV. Um, there's merit in beauty, and that's a special, you know, attribute mm -hmm. as well. Well, it's interesting because you know Miss America started out years ago in the 20s uh, on the broad boardwalk there in New Jersey, in Atlantic City. It was a swimsuit contest that the Chamber of Commerce, the local business people came up with to keep people in town for another week or two around Labor Day. It was a really big event and it's evolved over time. So it's not just about swimsuit. Then they added talent and interview and evening out and all these other things. Um, you know, swimsuit now is still just a very tiny portion. It's going away completely, but it becomes such a small portion. I don't know that it really decided the winner ever anyway. So if they think it's a better idea now to say, we want people of all different shapes and sizes uh, and people who may not have considered the pageant before, it's going to be a competition now. It's going to be something different and we want more people to be included. I think that's interesting. I'm all about tradition. And when I competed, it taught me a lot about taking care of myself, having a cleaning up my college diet and learning how to work out. And it was grueling a year of serving as Miss Virginia leading into the Miss America pageant. I was on the road all yeah, the time. Yeah, let me tell you, you cleaned tiring. up your college diet because I would not have cleaned up from my college diet look at me, the way look at that me. she did. I look 90 years old. I'm 19 going on 90 in that blue dress That was there. the 80s, honey. That's just <laughs> That's like, you know what? Everybody ago. looked like they were decades older That's than they big actually hair. were. Oh, Megan, you look beautiful. So, you know, I just want to get your thoughts on this as well quickly before we go, because uh, also tonight, four former Houston Texans cheerleaders are suing the league for better pay and equal treatment. The women delivering their demands directly to the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell. Watch this. We hope that by delivering this letter to Roger Goodell today, that he takes this seriously and understands that we just want to be respected and treated fairly and compensated properly for the work that we do. They're all someone's daughters. They work hard. They care. They love the NFL. Let's see a little love coming back to them in terms of pay equity and working conditions. Gotta love Gloria Allred. Um, but there again, you know, it's like, do we need cheerleaders on the sideline? Cheer, you know, is this a, something that women should be aspiring to at this at this stage of well, the game? Well, also in my past, I used to be a labor and employment lawyer, so I think this is a really interesting case. Yeah. Now, you can't talk about equity with the players. Yes, they're making millions of dollars a year, but they're also bringing in millions of dollars a year. Those are the reason that people are buying tickets or to come to see them. Now, if these women are alleging that they were paid minimum wage at times, and then they were asked to go to appearances that they never got paid for, but the teams got paid for to have them there. 
those are some interesting questions. You're never going to make what an NFL player is going to make, and you shouldn't make anywhere near what they're making. Um, but if they're not being paid for hours they worked as a former labor and employment attorney, that does yeah. concern me. Oh, absolutely. They're being told, you know what, if you don't want to do it, somebody else will. Right. We, we have a whole bunch of people who are dying to have your job, which is exactly. always a bad employment argument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I get where they're coming from. She even has her props. I'll give it to her. She's always got a prop, you know. Shannon, thank you so much. Good She's to see you. got it all going on. Even if you didn't win mm -hmm. all those pageants, making the rest of us feel like, you know, right. total slackers. Right. We'll get out our old pictures <laughs> and we'll put them out there on TV.